in the last sip of the old coffee. And three, two, one, we are live. And by live, I mean we're pre recording this. Uh, in case we make any mistakes, we'll edit it down and fix it before we publish it. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of Beyond the Device. I'm joined today with the fantastic Mike O'Mara from the one and only Identity Automation. Who are they? Why are we here? We're going to talk about it in just a second. I think they got a pretty great product set, specifically in the healthcare world today, is what we're going to be talking about. Uh, Mike, I know who you are. The people listening or watching might not. So before we get any further, I'm going to turn it over to you for an intro, and then we're going to get started. So, uh, Mr. O'Mara, who are you, and what do you do for IA? Hey, Reed. Thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Mike O'Mara, as we've covered. And for Identity Automation, uh, I manage our healthcare sales program. So um, I've been with the company since 2007, so coming up on 13 years here this summer. And prior to that was um, in the biometric space for eight years, um, really kind of trying to pioneer uh, fingerprint authentication, some iris work. And then as that permeated into healthcare in a couple different facets, I started linking up with uh, folks at um, HealthCast who were doing single sign on specifically for healthcare, um, kind of fell in love with the use case and scenarios and, and how we can help healthcare in general. So I came over here and I've been here ever since. Awesome. So you are brand new to the industry. No, yes, sir. yes, sir. You've been, yeah, you've been here for uh, you've been here for a hot minute, man. This is great. Uh, thank you again for, t uh, for taking the time to do this. We definitely want to have uh, more people like yourself on to talk about solutions in healthcare, specifically around identity and access management. I think identity automation for a lot of the work we've been doing at 3i. Most people know you guys uh, within the education space, but we're talking specifically healthcare flavor today. That's our genre, if you will, the vertical. Um, we're going to be talking about two different things, XA and Q. QA. Um, but I think maybe to go even one step back, people might not be a, aware of your background in healthcare, but you guys have had a long standing uh, background in healthcare. We're actually going to talk about uh, one of the University uh, Colorado Health later on. But uh, can you give us a little bit of background about um, identity automation in the healthcare space? Because you guys are not new to this. No, not at all. You're right. And I think there might be some uh, confusion out in the market relative to the name HealthCast. Uh, yeah, so, right. we, so HealthCast uh, was acquired by Identity Automation back in 2018. And so we are still a subsidiary uh, legal entity within Identity Automation who have really never lost our, um, our mantra of, of serving the needs of healthcare. So the HealthCast company where I came from uh, was back in 1996, uh, started up by uh, basically uh, a techno nerd uh, and a physician who was one was very frustrated with how they had to access their systems within the hospital to do their job. And the nerd said, hey, we can put some technology towards this and create a clinical single sign on for you. And that's kind of how the company got uh, was born. And so over the years, we've kind of developed uh, really a way to make the clinicians efficient, um, to make the uh, IT staff uh, more comfortable with how everybody's accessing the systems, et cetera, et cetera. So um, coming up on 20 plus years in the market, we really did pioneer uh, the tap and go with the proximity based log on uh, at the request of one of our customers who's been with us for 23 years and counting now. So back in 2000, they had come to us with a problem of, hey, we have these prox cards. They're awesome. We get into doors with them. We can get out of the cafeteria and eat with them. Um, would it be would be really cool if we could log in with them? And so we kind of took that with a partner, RFID is out there, who I'm sure you're familiar with. Yeah. Uh, got some API, did some dev work, and at the year, maybe 1999, 2000, uh, had them fully authenticating into a roaming desktop that followed them around all day, which in the year 2000 was pretty very, Star Trek pioneering yeah, stuff. Right? Very cool. Very cool. And That's so, awesome. Yeah. That, sorry. I mean, I didn't mean to cut you please. off. It's very like futuristic type stuff. Um, I think, you know, again, a couple things. One, uh, having a customer that long, clearly the mark of an unhappy customer. <laughs> so that's pretty, <laughs> pretty incredible for tw 20 plus years for you guys to be with the same, uh, the same customer. And then also another thing, uh, and something I really do love about you guys, uh, you are actively listening to the market at all times. So if someone's saying like, Hey, wouldn't this be great? Um, mm. we've done this with a couple other organizations in the health or assuming the education space. You've actually gone above and beyond specifically to do dev work for them to make, you know, what they ultimately is just a thought or a concept to bring it to fruition and make it a reality. So that's pretty, pretty freaking awesome, man. Um, <laughs> what uh, uh, specifically though, to go back to XA and QA, uh, you know, more 
uh, specific nomenclature to identity automation in healthcare. What is XA and what is QA? Because these are, I think, two great solutions for anyone that is maybe frustrated in the healthcare space with the cost of some things or the difficulty of implementation. I think you guys have mm -hmm. really designed well around both of those pain points. Well, thank you for that, Reed. Um, exact Access or XA was really the foundational product that we put forth back in 2000 or so. That's the clinical enterprise workflow um, solution set that does single sign on into you know hundreds, if not thousands of applications by now. Um, and so that has been developed and improved upon for 20 plus years. And then speaking of, of listening to customer feedback and the market, um, maybe eight, nine years ago now, um, as really the advent of virtual desktops came along and um, Active Directory LDAP type uh, scenarios where the applications would open based on your user profile for Windows, we didn't really need to address all those applications. We further along those lines saw EMRs subsuming lots of other ancillary applications. And so that wasn't so much of an issue anymore. And so we were asked, hey, if we don't need a full-blown single sign-on platform, we don't need to integrate with 100 apps. We just want to get in and out of our virtual desktops or local window session. And from there, we can kind of accomplish our goals throughout the day, throughout our shifts. Um, could we do something a little lighter weight? And that's where uh, quick access or QA uh, came to, to, to bear. So that is basically um, a proximity-based authentication into one resource, whether that's your local window session that's kind of all it does. We'll sign you in, we'll sign you out, we'll sign you over somebody. If somebody committed a prior sin of leaving a session open and walking away, when that next user comes up and taps, we'll close read session and start logging in Mike. So we can cover up for, for that um, minor violation that you had committed. Uh, and <laughs> again, also, again. It, it does, well, yeah, education is key. Um, and so QA was also really good at getting in and out of virtual desktops very quickly. So it's a Windows and RDS session, Horizon View, that sort of thing. Uh, Zen Desktop, if that's enough workflow for you and getting the proximity-based tap to switch users and authenticate in and secure your session, that's what Quick Access was designed to do. Very lightweight. We removed some of the backend horsepower needed to run it. So it's very fast, it's very inexpensive, and services are kind of done in a couple of days as opposed to you know weeks or months with a full-blown enterprise platform. Awesome. Yeah, and I think that's, again, it's like the, the cost and the weight and of the development of some of this. It's like, yeah. you know, I mean, you can technically, if you have enough time and resources, you can you can develop and deploy anything. But in sure. the real world, if, as far as like getting an actual solution in market, you really aren't afforded that it's it's really a time and efficiency and, and money yeah. it's like that weird trifecta it's like you can have two <laughs> yeah and there's nothing prohibiting you from starting with quick access to give them quote unquote enough workflow benefit mm -hmm. get them in and out of their system uh, and then start adding the single sign-on functionality on the back end down the road so you can certainly you know take the crawl walk run approach yeah and that's actually i think it's a a, a great point and something that um I would love to see more organizations do, which is, you know, the 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, like the, mm -hmm. the roadmap approach. I think a lot of times people get stuck in like this pilot purgatory because they're like, well, what, what is it going to be yeah. in five? It's like, you, sometimes you just kind of have to start building it in order to yep. get it there. Not to say that you just jump right in. You have to have a plan of where you're trying to go. Always begin with the end in mind. Right. But sure. you got to start somewhere. I think a lot of times they want everything. Some organizations get stuck in the, map everything out to the nth degree before they can actually um, yep. you know, get something implemented. And in the meantime, they continue to suffer all the other problems that they're having in the, in the meantime. So sure. definitely, sure. definitely food for thought and great organization and a great person to reach out to Mike O'Mara if you're having those types of issues. Um, I do want to talk about the why. Um, this is also very important. Um, a lot of times, I think organizations in every industry, you're not just solving for one individual, right? So it's like you have doctors and nurses, you have IT, you've got uh, uh, HR, you've got yeah. your you've got your seat level, you have shareholders. There's a lot of people to take into consideration. I think sometimes tech doesn't get rolled out because they might be solving for the IT department, but they just left off the finance department right. and they're not happy. 
or you're trying to solve something for the finance, the IT department, but the user is like, Hey, this isn't doing, this isn't, you know, scratching the itch. So sure. can you talk a little bit about, uh, the, the design of how you guys went to market with this? Because I think, again, going back to the intelligent design piece, the comment I made earlier, I think you guys really did see this from a, a encompassing solution for all, all, all personas as far as like who you're trying to solve for in this space. Yeah, you, you, I think you hit the nail on the head, Reed. There's several different constituents, you know, within the market that all view the product set, you know, differently. Um, and so depending on who you're speaking with, that, that message can certainly change. So first and foremost, you know, this was made for clinicians, providers, doctors, nurses, um, so that they can, you know, effectively manage their day to day interactions with the patient. So clearly, if they're authenticating 120 times a shift, give or take, and they have to sign in every time and they have to sign into seven applications, they're doing that while the patient's sitting behind them waiting to be seen. So um, first and foremost, we want to make their jobs easier. Uh, they can tap their badge, we'll sign them in. As soon as they tap their badge, they turn around and start interacting with the patient. So um, from that perspective, you know, their life gets better, you know, their shifts get better. Um, they will refer their patients to your hospital, assuming that they have a place that they can comfortably practice medicine and treat patients and not mess with their workstation all day. So that's one. I think the second one, call it IT. You know, they want to make sure that the applications are being accessed efficiently. They've got compliance issues they need to deal with. They've got workflow issues. Um, so they want to make sure that the workflow is streamlined out there and that IT can handle the workload and it doesn't come back to them as something additional they need to provide extensive care and feeding with. And so our product set was designed to be pretty front loaded, like you mentioned, covering all those use cases up front um, if you go that route and then it's kind of set it and forget it. Uh, I think at management level, certainly the CFO, this is a very quantifiable ROI if you can save 10, 12, 15 minutes a day for a physician, you can easily map that to, hey, I can see two more patients a day. That is a measurable improvement uh, on the finances of the hospital or the system. So yep. um, compliance as well. Hey, we know who accessed what systems, where, when, and how. You know, that's a benefit for, for auditing down the road um, and for compliance purposes. So um, a whole bunch of different constituents within the system that can all benefit in a slightly different way. Yeah. And he, all the way down to, you know, HCAP scores can get dinged if you're screwing mm -hmm. around with logging into systems and you have less time with a, with a patient. And then all of a sudden they're coming yeah. back because you didn't get the proper care. That's going to disproportionately in a negative way, impact the hospital. And I'm actually, can you talk a little bit too about, um, turnover in the hospital? Cause I, I've been reading a ton about how hard it is to retain people. I think that's, this is maybe dovetailing into that as well. Yeah, that, that's a great point. There are certainly, you know, quantifiable benefits for retaining your high performing um, clinicians. And so it costs a lot of money to go out, uh, attract, train, uh, and then retain uh, providers. So you want to make sure that when they come to your hospital, your system, your clinic, what have you, that they can do their job in a satisfactory manner um, so that they remain happy, remain with your system, and you don't need to go replace them because that's an expensive proposition. So, yeah, a clinician retention is a really big component of this. Yeah, and I know uh, we, we chatted a little bit about uh, Colorado Health earlier mm. um, and we uh, basically how this whole thing came to be as far as uh, your initial work with them. Um, and I just want to highlight again, just to go back to that, you know, having a customer on board for over 20 years, I think is, some, is really pretty amazing especially in the healthcare world where, and anybody in the healthcare world is very well, very well aware of this. It's, a, a, you know, it's dollars and cents and time. So the fact yes. that you've had the same organization with you guys for as long as you have, and they've been happy is, is really, really saying something. Yeah, that, that's wonderful to hear, Reed. Uh, it is, it's a challenge. Uh, they're an excellent customer, a good group of, of very competent and, and driven individuals over there that maintain continuity for their providers, for their architecture, for their environment, et cetera. Um, and we've been th with them through, originally they were McKesson with a whole suite of, of different applications that didn't integrate all that well, which is kind of where we started our work and said, hey, we have this McKesson suite that's got 15 different applications and they're all a little bit different. They don't really talk to each other. Um, that's where we kind of came in to try to make that transition for the users a little bit easier. Um, you know, in the interim 20 plus years, you know, they've fully migrated over to Epic. So when you switch EMRs, that's a whole nother can of worms that was 
you know, a difficult proposition and a long-term one. And so, you know, work through that as well. And, and we've done that with other folks as well, moving them from one EMR to another, which is a, a pretty comprehensive change. Yeah, absolutely, man. Again, like I said, you guys listen to your customer base, and I think that speaks volume, especially in a world where everyone's trying to um, figure out where they can cut cost and be a little bit more lean. You get to a place where lean turns into anemia. Um, yeah. and you're really not, yeah. operating, uh, not operating efficiently anymore. I think you guys are still really uh, very, very uh, heavily focused on the support aspect of this industry, which is really crucial. Um, so that... that, that that was basically, as we got a short one for you today, uh, that I just want to do a quick wrap up for you. Uh, you know, if, again, if you're just a quick overview, because we've covered a ton, QA, XA, if you're looking for that quick access uh, into, uh, into your systems, uh, just that badge in, badge out, for that Windows-based environment, that's the way to go. If you're looking for the XA, which is the exact access you're looking for, something like badging into Epic, did I cover that properly? You did. Uh, client side for us, it doesn't matter necessarily if it's Windows or even iGel, uh, HP, Dell Weiss, thing, ThinOS type things. We can accommodate that. Uh, the quick access is a simple way to get in and out of one thing. If you want to get in and out of more things, including your EMR, that's where XA comes in. But basically, if you want to take your your photo ID, your RFID badge that you use to get into doors and apply that to your clinical workflow, um, give us a call. Awesome. The one and only Mike O'Mara. Thank you so much for doing this, man. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Always a pleasure to talk to you. And thank you guys so much for checking this out, watching or listening, whichever medium that you are doing that on. Be sure to check us out for another episode of Beyond the Device. Uh, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Reach out to us at sales at 3itech.com. That's sales at the number 3-E-Y-E-T-E-C-H.com. Thank you guys so much again for joining us. We'll see you on the internet. Cheers.